Paktoons up against the Punjabi legends in the second semi-final. Well, here we go, first one in the second semi, a leading edge from number 28 here in Sharjah. Ah, oh, smoking! There's the first maximum, courtesy of Shazar. Get rid of Roshan. Ah, oh, this is help yourself! Tamim Iqbal! Yeah, it's gone all the way, and the ball boys are missing out on a million rupees. That was short. This time it's uh, Tamim. Really didn't go too far back, but just swung it from where he was. Oh, yes. Dalit's getting carved up here some more. Yes, he is. For years. Tamim Iqbal, he's extended his range here as the Bangladeshi. And he says, that's how you play a little swivel. Obviously, after a good first over, Dalit's a run. Been taken apart. He's gone for 21 in the over. Still a ball left. Another look at that shot. Look at that. That's like a ballet dancer. And he's up and over, and that is so handsome and so simple for high point. But he's certainly on song at the moment. Now, he didn't get all of this, but he got enough of it. I think it's just shy. Just opens that front foot, like most batsmen do in the modern day, looking to go over the top or play a shot like that. And bounces just in front. Two to go, ten off. Shazar! looking out deep and it has been taken out in the deep there get me some of those pakistani rupees says the young fella legend's point of view oh, it curved and swung but i tell you what shazad was equal to it swinging his blade through the line ahmad shazad has been treating them with some delightful shots another one it's gone all the way. Stunning striking from this very talented right-hand opening batter. Where does he go now? He, uh, eh, not bad, but he still goes to the fence for four. Hassan Ali. Certainly Roshan doesn't. Oh, that's a great looking slap, is it? No, it's not. Not good enough to Mim. Got to give it some more bottom hand, buddy. And he's out, the first one down now of the Paktoons. Bopara with his magic. It was short and found the man like a guided missile. Straight down his throat. Ahmed Shezad on strike. Steers it, oh, that's four. That was very controlled for a moment. I thought it was heading towards that short third man. That big shot, six. Afridi starting the fun for us with a mighty skimmer. Jordan's extra pace helping him. Going over extra cover. Very safe shot. No one there on the boundary as well. Oh, don't worry about that. Off the back foot and a smash from Shahid Afridi. He's gone for six. Hassan Ali is over, gets spoiled by it. Goes! Huge! It was pitched up and look how he clears that front leg. Just went so wide with the front leg and then over long on. Oh, good as gold! Shahid Afridi in an unstoppable mood. 100 comes up. Quite late, quite in the evening of his career, if that's the right way to describe it. Yeah, you talked about him being a powerhouse. There is never any load shedding when he's batting. The light never goes on 48. Nama Shazad. And gets to a 50 with a glorious straight drive. Boundaries are raining here. Oh, magnificent six. Read the link so well in the free swing of the bat. Oh, they're innovating. They're so innovative and inventing shots. Look at that. 
ball in, good delivery, slower in pace. He uh, deceived him with a very good slow ball. Well deceived, back of the palm, angle. 58 of 29 balls, 112 for two. Fakhar Zaman is another big strike force and he's off the mark with a four. Yeah, not a great delivery. Again, the attempted slower ball, I don't think that's the right way to go. Fakhar Zaman just in. Bold him, this is clever. This is very good indeed. Another slower ball. Yeah, back of the hand, angle and delivery. Slackening the pace without letting the batsman know that it's going to be a slow ball. Yeah, beautifully bowl. And here is Ravi Bopara. And there she goes. Lands into the crowd. Shahid Afridi with another blistering six. They'll be looking at around 135 to finish off. They've got a six of the first. Oh, that's gone up in the air as well. Uh, that's a boundary. Uh, it's a miss hit and he should be caught. And he is, but not before providing us with a lot of entertainment. He's a Pakhtun favourite son. Yeah, another back of the hand delivery. And Shahid Afridi skying it to Ravi Bopara. I off Ravi Bopara to Jordan. 41 of 17 balls. What entertainment. 126 for four. Oh, that's a misfeel allows a single. And so at the end of the 10th over, innings is over and Pakhtuns have got 129. And they lost four wickets. And uh, so they've got runs on the board. And for a semi-final contest, there are plenty of runs. On the batting card. Look at that, 129 for four. Cesar, the quick fire, 58. Afridi, equally good. Tamim, top of the order, 17 of nine. I think we shouldn't have a, a bowling cart in T10 cricket. Because it, <laughs> it, it says nothing of, uh, of the bowlers because they were pinned and put to sword. Fahim was not bad at all. Economy rate of nine and a half. But uh, look at the rest of the cast. Afridi doing the job. Luke Ronke starts with a big one, but wicket. Oh! And then lost his rhythm because he was smashed just like that. Oh, flat and six. Umar Akmal off to a great six. Balance and power. What a smashing way to get off the mark. It's a miss hit, but that should be enough. Oh, cool is that? Six. Look at that. Six foot nine going back like this. So this is the shape of things to come in T10. Umar Gul gets oh. hit. Smash. Well, he's played a couple of great shots. Such a nice balanced. He'll go again, makes room, this time over point. And it's a four this time. Out, out, out. Call. And he'd be bitterly disappointed, Omar Akmal, because he was hitting the ball so beautifully, effortlessly. But couldn't get uh, the hang of it, uh, probably getting it at the bottom of the bat got himself into a very nice position but no legs on this one solid solid hit Ronke when he gets it right <laughs> well Ramiz I can tell you it's very noisy out here I, I think it's a better bath this tournament ki honi sakti and definitely zyada entertaining hai 10 overs ka match hai and Sharjah ke crowd ke baare mein humayu aap kya kehenge because uh, it's a packed house and as you can see it's been another yeah another aap aise laga sakti hain oh yes yeah, smashed it for six 
Pakhtuns will have to bring something special. Ronki is threatening to take the game away from them. And uh, Ronki is uh, making Mohamed Irfan. Uh, yeah, another great shot. You've got to. Out the batsman making room and... Well, it was an educated edge. He wanted this angle and he got it. What an over. Four boundaries and a six. Near the end is the captain. Sahail. Up against Shah Malik, that is. And he has fatted this one with some authority. And then he goes full. And he still goes the journey. Wrist work to the four here from Shah Malik. Oh, unlucky Sahail Khan. Between the legs. Nutmeg. Tried the Yorker, just missed it. Oh, that sounded sweet. Oh, it is. Ends the over. We've had 1-1, 4-4, 4-4, 18 off. It's 91 for 1. And he's larrapped it through extra cover. We're dealing in boundaries here, folks. Shahab Malik, the leading run scorer in the Hera T10 so far. Here we go! And there we go for some Humpty! Here's another maximum! Well, anything he bowls uh, at a decent pace uh, disappears. The scored ones are saving him, but uh, Shoaib Malik is everything behind that. Look at that superb swing of the bat. 12 the asking rate. And again! Talk about swivel with dynamicism. Shoei Malik, take a bow. Ah, oh, how about a shovel over extra? Ah, oh, you know it. 19 off the eight. It is one, one, zero for one now. Two to go here in the ninth. They want 15 from eight here. Ah, oh, give it some, baby! And he does! He's just flicked the switch here and showing Mullen! Oh, unbelievable! And this swivel and that area between square leg and mid-wicket is calling his own. Sure is, Adelwassen. Wonderful striking from a wonderful cricketer. Ah, oh, take that! That is out of the fat! And that is 17 of Boom Boom's final over. It is one, two, seven for one now. There you go. It's four and uh, Punjabi legends romp their way into the finals. They sure have and done it in style. With five deliveries to spare, folks. Wonderful hundred partnership exactly from 40 deliveries between these two gifted right-handers and they have been beaten by the Punjabi legends well two players uh, taking the game away 100 on partnership that says a lot that how this game was dominated by Luke Ronke and Shoaib Malik the bowlers uh, will uh, look at their bowling uh, cards and uh, will be disappointed you know you would say that Pakhtuns will defend 129 uh, five days a week but uh, today was not uh, the day for them the sole wicket taker was Omar Gol but he also went for 31 in two overs and look at those bowling lances Afridi going for two big hits still managed to be the best of the bowlers but uh, We are ready for the first ball of this grand final. Here comes Sohil Tanvir. And punched off the back foot. It's a boundary to start off for the Punjabi legends. That's the one. That is the one. It's gone out of the ground. 
he's met it beautifully and look at the head position it's so still at the point of contact and a wonderful simple follow through easy as you like helps himself to six more that's a cracker ah here's a mixture right on cue for our director to eat his heart out that's almost a yorker there with a slower one that knocks over umar akma yeah that's very clever very clever again that attempted leg break Rachman goes for six, it's 19 for one. Oh, that's, has it gone all the way? It has! My goodness, that was a footless. And Rad Emirate, who's not the slowest, got picked off as if he was a little backyard spinner. Oh, the ball boy loved it too. Oh, another one, another one. What a shot from Ronke. This is effortless, but it's smart batting. Another one. It's raining. It is raining here. And goes over cover. It's gone all the way for six. My goodness. Ronke has hit it straight and out of the ground in six. It's his third consecutive 50 for Ronke. Oh. That is a huge one into the crowd. Shoaib Malik. Bending low, that right leg, kissing the surface when he was in motion there. And a whack, and a six, and a gigantic one. Oh, it's on the roof. Isn't he entertaining? Should be taken, should be taken. That's the end of Shreve Malik. The forehand smash not working. Maybe Sanya Mirza would have been more successful in that execution. He's not a tennis player, but boy, what a talent has become Shreve Malik in limited overs cricket. Big wicket. Got cramped just a wee bit. It had to be a six. Otherwise, this was going to be the end result. Curtains for Shweb Malik, 26 from 14, highly entertaining once again, 102 for the loss of two. Oh, gone, 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 wrong key, it's shot at the crease, they're looking for a review, I think he was he's quite tempted to give himself out. Probably missed it in the first swipe. But the bales did come off. Yeah, the bale is off, so he's gone. Ronke will be on his way, but not before impressing one and all with his majestic batting. He's had a big tournament, Luke Ronke. Getting a 69 off just 34 balls in the final is a big achievement. That's a bad misfield. That really should have been stopped. And misses the last ball, and they miss a run out chance. But still good enough because Legends have got 120 on the board, and Kerala Kings will have to bat well to win the inaugural final. It won't be that straightforward and simple. Ronke once again with a flyer. 69 from 34. Shweb 26 from 14. They had a very good partnership. And that probably was enough.
to give Punjabi legends leg and now a bit of hope with that score on the board. 120 for the loss of three. Soel Tanvir was outstanding. Called a couple of great overs. Plunkett, one for 19 in his two, was not bad at all. One for 27 for Emirate and Shakib went for plenty. And Walton straight away. And can you believe it? Trap was set. Walton's gone for a golden duck. Unbelievable start here for Fahim and the legends. And what a nice bit of captaincy. They were so sure that Walton's going to play that shot. That placed the fielder there. He didn't have to move. Look at that. And the bowler must uh, give him uh, full credit for bowling in the right uh, slot. He couldn't have gone anywhere else but there. Outside off stump, just short of good length, good pace. And uh, Akmal doing the rest. So big blow, Chadwick Bolton goes for a duck. It's Kerala Kings is uh, none for one. And he slices this over backward point. Left hander's angle against the right arm quick. Well, that's a proper shot. Well executed, just got the right elevation. Knew exactly where that point fielder is. Ah, oh, and no chance. And got most. Ah, oh, this is out of the screws. It is up on there in the roof. Brilliant stuff from the skipper, Alan Morgan. This should be a 12, let alone a six. Stunning. Oh, right of the meat. Look at that go. Beautiful in the backdrop of. Uh, dark skies and there it goes and plonk on uh, the gentleman's head and they're searching for more Yorkers clean enough from Morgan and this over is suddenly getting away from Fahim that's going downtown for half a dozen what an over what a strike from Morgan 24 off it it is now 48 for one Slow one and disappears. Can't bowl later, brings up the half century for the Kerala Kings in style and the 50 partnership, of course. Well, there you go in 20 deliveries. 50 has come. 54 now. And the required run rate just around 10. So they've brought the target down and made it easy for the team. in town with Morgan well the Irish are setting this field alight oh my god it's uh, Christmas time in Belfast yeah, it's come slightly early in it and there's a lot of turkey on the table getting smoked up in the air who wants it hasn't got all of it has he ah oh, it's in the top tier Cameras, get your hands on it. 168 maximum, courtesy of Owen Morgan. He had a chance to bite into that pie of a million Pakistani rupees. He's into the 40s as the captain. You're right, I thought that was a miss hit. <laughs> but you know, how far did it go? Look at that. It was in the top tier. Oh, you can't bowl there, Ravi B. No siree. Another maximum, and he's almost got 50 here, Owen Morgan. 46 from 13. He's striking at 353, folks. Extraordinary. Four fours and four sixes to the Irish skipper here of the Kerala Kings. Yes, he can! Bad luck, Carlos. Not even you could get this. 
What a half century from Owen Morgan. It is the fastest in Hera T10 this long weekend. Take a bow skip. Absolutely sensational stuff. Oh, yes, sir. Made a terrific sound, that bat. So the 100 partnership comes uh, in the finals. They've saved the best for the last. And look at that uh, joy in Kerala Kings camp. James Boxer, very steady, very quiet, but uh, people are having a party in the stand. And there it goes again. It's muscle for another Morgan special. Ah, oh, kill the Irishman. They should have earlier. The captain, Captain Morgan of the Kings. He just can't be stopped here in Sharjah. Skied up in the air. Will this be taken? Yes. Beautifully done by Breathway. 63 from 21. Kerala Kings cruising. Just eight now required of 19 balls. Oh. Straight and beautifully done. 50 for Sterling. He's had a wonderful T10 series. Lovely batsman to watch. Powerful striker. Oh, it's a wide. And that's goodbye and good night for the Punjabi legends. It's Owen Morgan and his men, Kerala Kings, have won it. And what a convincing run chase this has been. They were the better side on the day and they batted beautifully to track down that uh, decent total. So in summary, Punjabi legends put into bat by Owen Morgan could only muster, I say only, 120 for three. Ronke again and Shoab, the mainstays. And then Kerala Kings in reply cruised to 121 for two. Starting the day with another fantastic contest, the Pakhtuns versus the Bengal Tigers. I've got Shahid Afridi here and Safraz Ahmed representing the Tigers. Roshan Manama is the match referee. Shahid, you have the coin? Heads is a call from Safraz, the Bengal Tigers. Tail, it is. Shahid, what are you going to do? I'm boiling them easy. Bengal Tigers versus the Pakhtuns. It's going to be a very good contest because both teams have won their last games. Cameron Delpot is a force to reckon with. And he's up against a guy who's seven feet tall. Bowls a fantastic Yorker, bowls at pace. He's got a shoe size of 14. Any other vital statistics, Ramesh? <laughs> <laughs> it's not for your ears. <laughs> and presented a lot of problems. Here we go then. Starts off with a Yorker. Oh, chance of a run out. Provided he gathers the ball, hits the stumps, he misses it. Right. Oh, Johnson Charles. I think it's gone all the way. Yes, it is. Gets off the mark with a six. Another smack, another four. Yeah, that'll do extremely nicely for this giant of a man. Action a plenty. Oh, that's sweetly timed. That was a nothing delivery from Umar Gul. He's got to be either up 
Oh, oh that's uh, a massive six. Umar Gul clearly had a very, very struggling start. Oh, Bolin trying something e extraordinary. And Delport has been castled. Well, he does against spin. Well, he's not bad at all. That slapped over the infield for four. The sun quicker and given Shahid Afridi. Brilliant over. Oh, ho, ho. Flat and six. Miller showing his class. Oh, that'll do very nicely. Miller gets hold of that one. Oh, hits the roof. Who's tall. That's into the gap and four. Miller has played a lovely shot. He played the field, in fact. Oh, that's long and gone. Doesn't matter if you're a seven-footer. When you bowl in my zone, I'm going to hit you hard. Oh, this is poor bowling. It's going to cost the team. Oh, yes, that's the sky. That's gone in the orbit. Six more. And this time he gets hold of that one. That was beautifully played. Waited on that one. And he deserves rich applause here because he's got to a 50 of just 22 balls. Oh, six. Skimmer. Left-hander. Oozing talent, grace, quality, poise. Oh, finally manages to hit one. And it's a six. Timely blow. Didn't time it too well, but uh, managed to get it uh, over the ropes. Another good result. He wanted to hit it away towards long on or mid-wicket. Got an inside edge and a boundary. Six and a four. Oh! Where have that gone? <laughs> what a muscle. Oh, muscle his way through that one. Oh, uh, what a grand way to finish it. It's another gigantic shot. So, has somebody taken the catch? Sapil solid shot has probably been taken in the aisle, but uh, let's focus on Miller and what he delivered today. 68 from 26. Seven sixes, three boundaries. Just one cracking innings that we saw today to start the day on a great aggressive note. Highest score of the tournament as well, Ramiz, uh, look at that shot. And the follow-through was just stunted. So that means just using uh, the core of the body and the forearm. Oh, another chance goes down to mil win a million rupees. This was an easy one too. But highest score by David Miller, highest total also. Second highest. I've been corrected by our scorer. Bengal Tigers have got the runs on the board. 126 for the loss of two. Killer Miller 68 from 26. And even though Darren Bravo turned out to be a bit of a sore point in this uh, in this innings, but uh, his pressure was taken on board by Miller. 68 from 26. Charles early on had made a cameo. 28 from 12. The Tigers have got 126 on the board. The bowling, might not much to show for uh, Umar Gul making a comeback in the team, but going for 31. Irfan went for 36. That was the turning point. And when David Miller was on song, uh, even Sohail today found the reality of T10 cricket going for 34 in two overs. A lot of firepower to get over the line. 127 runs of 10 overs at 12.7 not runs per over. So this is the match we are enjoying right now. Pakhtuns versus Bengal Tigers. Bengal Tigers batting first have uh, put up a formidable total of 126 for two. And now Pakhtuns, who have been unbeaten in this tournament so far, will have to bring something special to the party. David Miller just taking the wing out of their sails by a breathtaking 68. Emma Shazad and Tamim Iqbal are out as openers for Pakhtun. And they'll have to fire from the word go. I'm Atul Wasan with me in the commentary box.
is Roshan. Roshan, what a knock by Miller. Yes, indeed. It is. I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Tami Mikbal. You were, you were all praised for him yesterday. And let's see how they set about uh, uh, going past or at least challenging this 127 of 60 balls. But yes, David Miller was outstanding. I, I think he's special, isn't he, Datu? I think so. I think Sohail uh, was an outstanding bowler in the first two games. Uh, just giving away 12 runs in four overs it bowled so far and went for uh, 34 today. It was a Miller show. And at one point, uh, Pakhtuz thought they could uh, just restrict Bengal Tigers to about 105 around that score. But suddenly, these extra 20 runs will really hurt them. Yeah, that's true. But it will be, again, how the openers set about as Pakhtuns, particularly this man and uh, Tami Mikbal. Tami Mikbal in particular looked in very good touch yesterday, the way he batted. He was uh, severe on anything short. He was looking to go over the top. And let's see whether he's able to express himself today. Amar Yamin, two wickets already for him. Uh, a reasonable economy, very good economy if you go by the standards. I think uh, anything less than uh, 10 runs and over, you've done well in this format. I never thought I'll say this aloud, but uh, T10 is changing the, f the way you consume the sport. Yeah, that's true. The entire landscape is changed, isn't it? I mean, we would have thought three runs and over was, was economical. And that was a time in 50 over cricket around four runs was very good. Well, I remember going for uh, 43 runs in my, in my debut game for India. And I thought, uh, you know, it was a bad day for me. In 10 overs uh, against Australia, I went for 43 and I was gutted. And if you do that today, you'll be a champion, man. You'll be a champion. They'll be all after you. Yes, we're ready to start. So it's going to be Amir who will bowl to uh, Tami Mikbal on strike. He's bowling to a slip. That's his familiar approach. Will that be a wide? It's not called a wide. To bowl fast. Oh, what a shot. The fielder got a hand to it, but still too much power. So the first boundary for Tami Mikbal. Oh, Shazad, take that. That is a magnificent. Magnificent shot, tremendous shot. Use the pace of the ball and hit it off the middle of the bat. And now you can't uh, seem to tell when you leave Dubai and enter Sharjah. There's no another boundary. Punched, oh, what a shot! That is a power pack shot. Hit with tremendous power. Oh, Shazad. That is a cracking shot again, holding the post after that shot. Unruly it is. Oh! He's going after him. Now, will this be taken by someone? No, it's on the roof. No question. Now, the full toss. Squalik in, inside the circle. So, they'll get a boundary. This is a poor over. Unruly is turning out to be very, very expensive. He's gone for 14. That was a bad delivery, keeping that in mind. Over covers, over point actually, and uh, another boundary. So Anwar Ali has been taken to the cleaners by Amishadar. He's been playing second fiddle. Let's see what he does here. He slices it. Is it taken? It is. Good catch. That's the kind of inspiration you need. High. Very high. In fact, it's in the Taken, 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 taken. I thought it has uh, uh, gone over the line, but I'm sure the umpire would want to see whether he touched the rope. Huge. Oh, you can't be bowling at that length to Shahid Afridi. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. That's six. Oh, are we in for a treat? Uh, we are in for a Shahid Afridi special. Afridi, will it, oh, it bounces and it beats him. That's not good. That is not good. That's Some less surprise so ever uh, says, uh, oh, smoked it. Slower one, wrong length. <laughs> Bold him. Bold him. This is big. This is a huge wicket. Shahid Afridi was uh, going for a walkabout. Fakar Saman. Is what? that? Oh, he dropped him, I think. 
Another one, another one. Now, will this be taken in the crowd? No, 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 it hasn't reached the crowd. Oh, where has that gone? Good effort, he couldn't get a hand to it. The question is, has it gone all the way? Or is it a boundary? Oh, this time over cover. It's gone into the crowd. Well, wow, Fakir Zaman is making a name for himself. Another one. That's high, high, high. There is a fielder. He takes it. That can be the match turning catch. Smith on strike. Gets an edge. It's a boundary to end the over. It's a big one. They've got 15 runs in the over. Oh, out of the park. Smoked it. What a start to the over. This is going to be a humdinger. We'll soon find out. Another one. Another one. He's got two out of two. It's on the roof. Now it's down to five or four. What could he do? Punches him. Four. That's the victory. Sapras is not happy. Uh, I think uh, match referees will have a look at it. What Sapras uh, Ahmed, uh, we can understand, is unhappy. But uh, you can't be knocking the stumps. But I'll tell you, there has been a few contributions. Look at that. Fakhar Saman's 31, Afridi's 23, Shesad's 37. And then, of course, Dawson, 19 of 5. Duel Smith hanging in there, 9 of 7. And winning of the last ball, 130 for 4. The Pakhtuns. And just two extras. And what a game it turned out to be. A high-scoring game. And... Uh, that, those are the bowling figures. Zahir went for a few in the last over. That was uh, a factor. Anwar Ali was very expensive, 35 runs. Naveed was good. Dilanga pulled a reasonable uh, ninth over. And uh, this is how the match ended. Look at the scores. Bengal Tigers, 126 for two. And that looked a very good score until the Pakhtuns made 130 for four, winning the game by six wickets of the last ball. He's taking him on and winning at the moment.
to do the positive things and uh, enjoy the game. Are you stacking up today? What changes have you made? Yeah, I think we have uh, we have uh, four five changes compared to last game. We have given more chances to the youngsters. Uh, so some some uh, back team uh, like we played against uh, uh, Kandahar. That team is same. So we playing the same level. Good luck for today. Thank you so much. Well, I'll get uh, you in here. I take it if you had won the toss, you would have batted first. Ah, yeah, of course. I also wanted to bat first, but it doesn't matter. Toss only for starting the match. It doesn't matter. Okay, and tell me about uh, your uh, tournament. It's been superb for you personally and the team. You're here in the semi-final now and deserve to be here. Uh, of course, we play a lot of good cricket in the last seven, eight games, so we just enjoy play cricket. Okay, and tell me about uh, the makeup of your team. Uh, have you made any changes from your last game? Yeah, we have a couple of changes. Like uh, Esan is injured in the last game, uh, hands problem, and the Gurbaz in, and the one fast bowler is uh, out of the squad and Asmatullah is in. Good luck for today. Thank you very much. Well, there we have it. News from our chair in the middle. That's an important game, and the Kabul's won and have won the toss. Rashid Khan, no hesitation in batting first. Well, it's semi-final number two, and we have a mouth-watering contest in store for you here. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a real tussle between two of the form teams in the tournament so far. Oh.
efforts be enough to see Kabul's one and through to the finals? Or will Mohammed Shahzad and his men look to beat their opponents? Charu Sharma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where do we have reduced this volume from? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All good? Sound, Kabir? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. On the lazy in three, two. Fantastic. Thank you. Goodbye. Good luck.
neck and neck, Carbles Wanan and Paktia Panthers raced to the semi-final. Paktia Panthers, though, picked up two extra points to finish second on the points table. Two points that perhaps gives them a psychological edge. Their captain, Mohamed Shazad, loves to lead by example. Injured and in pain, this wounded Panther scored his fourth 50 in their last game. Meanwhile, the man in charge of Kabul, Rashid Khan, continues to struggle with his bowling form. And he'll be relying heavily on his leading batsmen, Luke Ronke, Laurie Evans, Colin Ingram and Hazratullah Zazai. Will their efforts be enough to see Kabul Zwanan through to the finals? Or will Mohamed Shazad and his men bulldoze their opponents? Who will be the second finalist? Tonight, we'll discover the answer. Whichever way it goes, it's poised to be a thriller. A warm welcome to you from the Sharjah Cricket Ground. And we're all set for the second semi-final of the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League, powered by Fog. Paktia Panthers and Kabul Zwanan will slog it out. Not too much difference between the two. And uh, we expect another fantastic match to the Yakleth Hangar. And uh, we're just a few minutes away. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, so, Kabul Zwanan, of course, won against... Uh, Paktia Panthers in a terrific chase in that very first match of uh, the league and uh, that really set it up for a fantastic finish. And we've got them again here in the second semi-final. Of course, the second time around they met in the league. It was time for the Paktia Panthers to win. I'm Charu Sharma. I've got Ajay Mehra with me and uh, I hope I trust you agree. This uh, has every indication of being a real thriller. Good evening, Charu. Good evening, all the viewers. Yes, you're right because uh, this is how they have... Uh, qualified for the semi-final they won against uh, the first game was a high scoring one w winning by three wickets of course then they lost and then uh, they came back very strongly and in the end if you see they lost by six wickets against the Paktia Panthers but overall it was uh, a terrific start for them they were the way they played the way they gelled as a unit let's go down to Brian and let's see who's got a, got a chat I'm delighted to say that we've been joined by Kabul's Wanan's Wayne Parnell Wayne, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Now, it's a big game this evening. How much does that game a couple of nights ago count for? Does it count for anything? Um, I think, obviously, in terms of results, it you know, uh, doesn't count. But for us, learning is obviously very crucial. And, you know, we've, we've taken away some, some things from that previous match. And hopefully we can implement them now, um, which will obviously be of, you know, more, more benefit to us. Now, from your perspective as a bowler, I guess everyone will be focusing on the Kabul attack against Mohamed Shazad. Is that the way you see this game? Is that going to be a key aspect of this match? Yeah, I think obviously for, for them, he's, he's been their main batter. He's obviously scored the most runs for them. So, you know, trying to obviously get him early is going to be, you know, vital. Um, but having said that, you, you know, they, they have some guys down the order that are, you know, quite dis um, destructive. So, again, like I obviously mentioned earlier, just about trying to implement those, those plans that we... Um, sort of figured out on, you know, the other night and, you know, try and, you know, do that. Now, Laurie Evans missed out uh, a couple of nights ago. So did Rashid Khan, both rested. In this form of the game, how important is rest? I is, it, is it possible for players to lose some rhythm uh, by missing out on a match or, or is it important given how intense the schedule has been? Um, I think there's obviously uh, different ways to look at it. I think, you know, um, being mentally tired um, can affect you physically as well. Um, so I think with all these these games coming thick and fast, I think you know just giving guys um, a day off here and there is, is obviously nice. Um, and to to just re refresh, I think obviously Laurie in the first couple of games batted for quite long, and then he's running from long off to long off, um, which obviously tires him out. And then you know it obviously has a knock on effect. Um, so hopefully they can you know come out to tonight and obviously be fresh and you know put in maximum performances for us. And how much have you been working on the captain over the last uh, couple of days to ensure that you bat at number three again? Um, no, there's obviously something nice. Uh, Colin knows me from, you know, back home, uh, having played with him. Um, so it was nice to obviously strike a few. I, I really enjoy my batting as well. Um, and, yeah, hopefully tonight uh, is an opportunity again. But if not, then, you know, what's whatever's best for the team. Wayne, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Best of luck tonight. Great, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks, Brian. Yes, um, and this man is going to be the key as well. Shahid Afridi, uh, well, he's uh, really bowled well along with the Suru Dana. They have been the key, and the bowling looks pretty good, led by Mohammad Shahzad, who's been in great form with the bat. Uh, they look to be a very good unit as well, cohesive unit. And the big thing is, especially the bowling, which has really come up uh, leaps and bounds. Yeah, there's very little wrong with the Paktia Panthers, and of course, their skipper, if he's 100%, because he had that injury we were talking about on his ring finger in the right hand because he insists on keeping uh, then of course the team would be very well served 
They lost their opening match despite scoring 218 and then, of course, won a whole lot. They lost a couple towards the end, but uh, they are a very, very settled, good unit, led extremely well by Mohamed uh, Shahzad because of the runs that he's scoring. And that's Ryan Murgatroyd once again busy uh, down near the boundary line. He's got somebody from Paktia Panthers to give us their team news. I'm delighted to say that we've been joined by the Paktia Panthers uh, batsman Callum McLeod. Callum, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Now, you're coming into this semi-final off the back of uh, a, a day off after a couple of uh, successive night matches. How much did you need that recharge of the batteries as a team? Yeah, I think it was important. Uh, I think after two two, uh, two good games, uh, obviously the, the first game didn't go the way we wanted, but um, just to go away, reflect on the games, and then, then come back today. Now, in terms of uh, the side itself, Mohamed Shazad, seen as a key man, is he is he the basis on which you're going to win this game tonight? Um, well, we, we spoke about it. We want somebody to put their hand up. Um, Shaz has been brilliant all tournament. I, th I think he's top run scorer. I could be wrong. Um, and the way he's led from the front um, as a batsman, as a captain, and the way he's made sure we're enjoying ourselves is, um, on and off the field has is, is been vital to how we're going. Does that result a couple of nights ago count for anything here? Um, it could do, but at the same time it's 2020. Um, they'll bring in a couple of a couple of strong players, and um, we fully expect them to come back and, and have done some homework and come back strong today. I mentioned Mohamed Shazad, of course, but you've got one of the leading bowlers in the tournament in Asuru Adana as well. How much are you relying on him for those early breakthroughs? Because it, he, he's made a habit of that, hasn't he? He's really broken the back of opposition time and time again. Yeah, and, and it's, it shows how valuable a, a, a bowler like that is out in, in Sharjah with the um, the way the wickets are and the boundaries are. If you can if you can restrict them by taking wickets, then it's an absolute trump card. And um, so far, he's been he's been excellent, and it's hopefully. All Produce another performance tonight. Big game tonight. Confident? Um, yeah, it's an exciting game. Uh, it's a game to enjoy. It's why you want to come and play cricket. Callum, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Good luck tonight. Thank you. Well, it's certainly going to be a very enjoyable match. These two teams have met uh, twice in the league phase, and that first match was the first match of the inaugural. Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League and its success, and I suppose the noises made around the world is largely due to that match. 218, the Pakhtia Panthers scored, and they thought they'd had enough. Raza, fabulous 78, not out. Mama Shahzad setting the way uh, as a skipper with 67. But guess what? Carl Zwanan had thoughts of their own. Laurie Evans, a fabulous 79, not out. Hazratullah showed a bit of his uh, big hitting abilities there. And uh, Kabul won in the final over. So that was a huge surprise for Pakhtia Panthers, but wasn't a fantastic match. Yeah, you're right, Aaron. But uh, Pakhtia Panthers really came back strongly in the uh, second uh, league game between the two. And of course, scoring 172 for the loss of four wickets. Mama Shahzad uh, leading the way with that half century. Really batted well, Parnell getting a couple of wickets. But in the end, the Panthers winning by six wickets. The surface is always important. Alistair Campbell was out there with the pitch report. Well, it's semi-final two, and uh, we're on a different wicket uh, here today. The first uh, semi-final was on the wicket over there. A, a pitch that I think is a better pitch, and uh, today we're on uh, the one that we started the competition with. W what do I think? Well, I'll tell you what. Yesterday, I thought that uh, the pitches were getting a little tighter, and maybe there'll be a bit of bite in there, and especially for the slower balls, for the spinners as well on the slow side. But then Chris Gale came in, Darwish, Rasuli, Mohammed Nabi, and just made a mockery of that and uh, hit the ball a country mile. And I think that uh, the smaller boundaries you have, if you've got somebody that gets in and hits a lot of sixes, it can make actually, uh, as I said, a mockery of uh, the conditions. We saw when uh, the Nangaha Leopards batted that uh, they totally went to pieces. And I think that was more mental disintegration than anything to do with the surface. But having a look at uh, this particular surface, I just think it's not as good as that one. Uh, there's a few more cracks in, uh, in this surface. There's a few more greener patches um, it, it just looks a bit uh, a little bit tacky and a little bit uneven and uh, but like I said th that can uh, mean nothing if you've got a couple of batsmen that do get in and uh, take on the bowling because of these uh, these smaller boundaries Mohammed Shazad watch out for him if he gets going like I said I mean he can uh, bat on anything so uh, I think it's going to be a, a still a good a good pitch when I say that it's tacky it's not like a, a 120 130 wicket I still think it's a good wicket it'll be interesting to see what the captain does first do they want runs on the board or do they want to chase now that's going to be interesting and the crowds are building on it's going to be a big game the second semi-final of course the Balkans is already there in the final and um, Alistair mentioned a few cracks out there, but still reckons it's going to be a good surface. But overall, uh, what do you think, Charu, uh, as far as the surface is concerned? 
Well, yeah, I, you know, I wonder if we overread it because, as Alistair also said, that a few of the players came in there, like Gale, for instance, and didn't quite seem to be bothered at all. Of course, that was a different surface. But also, I know Mohammed Shahzad is not likely to be overly concerned, but we saw Rashid Khan earlier there studying uh, the, the, the pitch and, and wondering uh, what he possibly will do in case he wins the toss. Alistair Campbell stayed there at the center of the ground, and he was there with the two captains for the toss for the second semi final. Well, it's semi final number two, and we have a mouth watering contest in store for you here. I'll tell you what, it's going to be a real tussle between two of the form teams in the tournament so far. It's the Paktia Panthers, and uh, up against them are the Kabuls, one on. To the winner, the spoils, a chance to be in the final against the Bulk Legends, and to the vanquished, well, deep introspection about what might have been. The two captains outside, uh, well, with me outside here tonight, it's uh, uh, Rashid Khan, got that right, Mohammed Nabi and David Jukes, and uh, Mohammed Shazad, sorry, got that right. You got the coin, Mohammed. Heads is the call. It is a head. Rashid, you've won the toss. What are you going to do? Uh, Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Uh, I think you would like to bet first. It's a big match, semi final. So looking forward to, to, to put a good total on the board and try to defend that. Okay, is that uh, the philosophy that in a big game runs on the board, that's how you can create pressure? Uh, uh, that is also something, you know. But, you know, I think we have a good betting lineup. And uh, so we just need to put uh, some, some uh, good total on the board make them under pressure and it's a big game so hopefully we'll try our best to defend the total and we have a good bowling lineup as it so the team is balanced yeah i mean you've had a good uh, tournament so far but that means nothing now this is a knockout game you got to win two games you win the trophy yeah it is you know big game big match we just need to do the basics right we, did, we just need to do the what we have the talent just need to show that doesn't need to do anything different uh, yeah it is a big game but uh, the best thing will be to control the nerves and to enjoy the game so hopefully we'll try our best to to do the positive things and uh, enjoy the game how are you stacking up today? What changes have you made? Yeah, I think we have uh, we have uh, four five changes compared to last game. We have given more chances to the youngsters. Uh, so some some uh, back team uh, like we played against uh, uh, Kandahar. That team is same. So we're playing the same eleven. Good luck for today. Thank you so much. Well, but I'll get uh, you in here. I take it if you had won the toss, you would have batted first. Ah, yeah, of course. I also want to do bad part, but it doesn't matter. And tell me about uh, your uh, tournament. It's been superb for you personally and the team. You're here in the semi final now and deserve to be here. Uh, of course, we play a lot of good cricket in the last seven, eight games, so we just enjoy to play cricket. Okay, and tell me about uh, the makeup of your team. Uh, have you made any changes from your last game? Yeah, we have a couple of changes, like uh, Esan is injured in the last game, uh, hands problem, and the Gurba's in, and the one fast bowler is uh, out of the squad, and Asmatullah is in. Good luck for today. Thank you very much. Well, there we have it. Use them out here in the middle. That's an important game, and the Kabul's one and have won the toss. Rashid Khan, no hesitation in batting first. Thanks, Alistair. Yes, not a big surprise because you want to get uh, runs on the board. That's going to be always important. And they're really bad team for them. Uh, the good thing is uh, Laurie Evans, he's uh, fit once again. And, uh, well, they have a very strong middle order. Both the empires walking in. All in is here for the second semi-final. And it's going to be a big game, Charu. Without question. Uh, that's what I tried to suggest right at the top. Uh, we're hoping for a cliffhanger down to the wire, the last delivery. Who knows? These two teams are uh, very well matched, and uh, they both uh, have equal levels of skill. I just wonder about the leadership. Now, Rashid Khan, of course, very young. He's uh, uh, an international, if I might say so, has been around the world, and uh, lots of reputation as well, great bowler. Uh, seems to be a little more involved, uh, maybe under a little more pressure as well because of ex expectation. But on the other hand, uh, Mohammed Shahzad just seems so incredibly cool, uh, at least as far as his demeanor goes, his language goes. He doesn't really care too much about the pressure. And I wonder eventually whether that will help or not. But uh, so that's Kabul's one on. They will be batting first. Hazratullah Zazai, the only century of the tournament. If he can get anywhere close to that, they would have started magnificently. Yeah, we just see the bowling as far as the Panthers are concerned because they're going to bowl first. Uh, they have a Suru Udana with them. Shahid Afridi, Ashraf, he's done a very good job. Sharifi, well, he's come up uh, leaps and bounds. The way he's delivered for his side uh, with the new ball in the death overs. So they really have a very good bowling unit. It's going to be a good tussle out there. And everybody just waiting in eagerness for the start of the game. Of course, both the openers out there need Ronki. He's uh, got a few uh, games where he's got a start. Two and eight runs for him so far in the APL. A uh, decent strike rate as well, 135. And his partner has created a few flutters, few records for himself. Hazratullah Sazai, 288 runs, 12, getting a big 100 as well, 124. And uh, a very impressive strike rate, 202 for him. Well, check out that strike rate. Yet, of course, uh, the Paktia Panthers may not be too impressed because the last time they played, if I remember correctly, they got Ronki on the fourth delivery and Hazrat on the sixth. 
So if they can get rid of these two quickly enough, then uh, the Panthers may well be on their way. Of course, both teams back fairly deep. So no disrespect to those coming. But Luke Ronke has been slightly more up and down. And the last couple of matches have not been too good for Hazrat. Here we go, Yasuru Dana, the record in chief of just about every team he's bowled against. First ball, second semi-final, up in the air, just to the left of cover. Oh, that was so dangerous. Despairing dive there, but we begin with a fog, Saluriza. Yes, it was in the air, and uh, really, uh, I think the fielder as well, trying his best there. It was eluding him uh, at cover point. Vaz was out there just leaping, oh, just uh, missing his stretch arms. This is the kind of start he wanted as a bowler, an early wicket. He's really done well so far. Udana, 15 wickets for him in the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League. Missed the first game, I remember, which was a very high-scoring one. But since the time he's come back, he's really delivered time and again for his side. A slip in place as well. Will uh, get a single, so a decent start here for Luke Ronke. Yeah, Udana has enjoyed a fantastic tournament, the top wicket taker here. And uh, how just a few inches, as in life, separates uh, winning and losing here in cricket too. That catch, if it was taken, Gronky would have been walking back to the pavilion. So two, then four, three, one, two, one. Uh, he's been among the wickets every single time, and there's nothing to suggest that he will not be among the wickets today as well. This is Udana has been magnificent, cutting across with his uh, lefty seamers across right-handers and uh, the ability to bring it back as well. So, complete bowl and those slower deliveries, like, terrific. Yeah, you're right, absolutely. And th that's the thing uh, about him because he's got those variations in his armory. Azrafullah Zazai will be on strike now for the first time. Big responsibility as well on his shoulder, especially after that 100. Six sixes uh, in a over, which he garnered and made a big name for himself. World over. I don't think Udana wants to go short here. Yep, it's full. As I just about gets the bottom of his back to it. That's a pretty good strategy against Hazrat, who uh, can pull very hard. Any time slightly short, and you can see the ball uh, deposited over the wicket uh, boundary. So he'll be happy, I think, to get to the other <laughs> end. Bismillah, Jan Shinwari at the uh, bowler's end. Empire from Afghanistan, his partner. Anil Chaudhary from India, the ICC panel as well, very experienced. Down the track, he does well, up and over. That's a good strike. One bounce over the skirting. A fog four once again for Luke Ronke. He's making a move here. Well, that's one way to blunt this Udana's abilities by charging out. So Udana has warned there. I wonder what the next delivery is going to be. Short, he thinks, but uh, that was very handsome. Got to the pitch of the ball, went through with it. No hesitation there, just about one bounce and a, another fog. Salu Reza. Which, of course, in case you haven't gathered yet, is a four. Udana, expensive for the first time in his opening spell. Oh, slower one, whipped away. And that, too, will be a one-bounce four. Luke Ronke has started in great fashion. You can see, Charu, the intent he's coming with. You know, he's uh, wanting to make runs. He wants to uh, cash in in the first six overs, utilize the power play. Again, a very good shot, very good pickup shot there. See exactly where the fielder was. There was a man at deep square leg playing wide of him. And that's a very good four as well. One bounce over the skirting. So three fours already up for him in this over. Luke Ronke. It's a left-hand combination up the order. He's got to be very careful about his line here. This is Udana. Yeah, full stop. And uh, Ronke will be <laughs> a little cross at having missed out on that opportunity. So a quiet end to a very busy over. 14 off it for none. Playing 11s for uh, the second semi-final. It's going to be a big game, of course. Kabul wins the toss and uh, choosing to bat first. Decent start for them uh, for the first over. Getting uh, 14 runs on the board. Three fours as well coming from the blade of Luke Ronke. Looking in good touch. Uh, didn't start off too well. Bit uh, edgy on the shot. Uh, very lucky just to lose the field of Gurbaz. But after that, uh, very assured. Coming down the track, nimble-footed. This was uh, a very good pickup shot against uh, the slow delivery. 
Repose for him, right hander. Done well so far. Rezai will be on strike now. It's going to be a Sharifi from the other end. One man who's really delivered for his side. Been very impressive. Nine wickets for him. His best three for 27. Let's see that economy as well. Around eight, hovering around eight. So he's really done well in the death overs. The field supporting man at deep square leg. The fine leg inside the circle. Third man as well. A ring of fielders on the off for the left hander. Knows a thing or two about uh, Hazratullah Zazai Sharifi. Oh, what a shot. What a shot. That's terrific. Majestic. Spakiza. What a powerful striker of the ball he is. Yes, it was four, but he spotted it quickly enough and whipped it over deep square leg. He was right there. He didn't have to move an inch, except he couldn't uh, leap high enough for that. Tremendous pace. And uh, it just flew. Must be about 12, 14 feet above the ground. But it uh, thudded into the fence about 10 yards behind the boundary line. What a shot to begin with. Special player, Hazrat. Well, Sharifi wasn't very happy with that uh, fielder's effort because that was a parallel six. Didn't get the elevation. The timing was absolutely brilliant. Much better. Wearing his pace. The slow delivery. Didn't move an inch there, the fielder. I don't know whether he didn't sight it or whatever. But it was such a terrific shot. Well, I have no doubt that it went a little too high over his head. But that's uh, just a reminder of the changes. Kabul Zwanan went without their regular captain last time around. He sat out. Uh, and, uh, of course, Rashid Khan's come back in. So has Mohammed Javed Ahmadi. And also in Shahidullah Kamal. So the three who lose out, uh, Shaukat Zaman, Usman Adil, and uh, Nasir Sotakil, who put in a reasonable performance last time around. That's for Kabul. And a couple of changes for Pakistan Panthers as well. Biko Gay Prasanna, unfortunately, not getting a game. And uh, Isanullah Janaf, we heard the captain say he's a little injured. So we've got Cameron Delport back in. And a couple of others. Oh, up in the air. Should be taken now, but just behind Shahid Afridi. Not the quickest. That was a wonderful fielder. But... Uh, Eventually, there'll only be two. That was a narrow escape for Luke Ronke. Yeah, he's been uh, touch lucky so far, Charo, because we saw off the first delivery as well. Just looting the field, uh, Gurbaz this time, not timing it as he would have liked. Uh, just so well, Shahid Afridi, never easy. Goes over his shoulder. Had to backpedal on that occasion, just falling over his shoulder. And then, of course, uh, a couple of runs there. Bit of fumble there in the deep as well from Shahid Afridi. Well, I tell you, he had his right foot in the right place, which is what prevented that Fog Salu Reva. But uh, Zia, well, what could have been? Uh, that really hurried on to Ronki, mind you. He was a little late on that shot, got it high on the bat. Yeah, you're right. That, that's a fact about uh, Sharifi, that he can really uh, hurry up the batsman. He's got that pace, good variations in his armory. He can really bowl well in the death overs as well. They need a good start. They're exactly what they're looking for in the dressing room. He's been very impressive, uh, Sharifi. The way he's bold, tall man, good at neat action. Seeing not too many complications in his action. 3 for 34 against the Bulk Legends. 3 for 27 against uh, the Lepers. So he's really uh, done well in a few games against Kandahar as well. Picking up 3 for 41. A touch expensive in that game. Did not play earlier in the tournament in the first few games. But since the time he's come into the playing 11, certainly he's made a difference. He's made a mark for himself coming up around the wicket away from the left-hander. Just changing his angle, but that's played well. Yeah, again, ha Hazrat just a shade late on it, but uh, did well to keep it down. Because the top edge there, the man was in place at uh, deep square. So, uh, another expensive over for the Pakhtia Panthers. And uh, I'm sure Mohammed Shahzad is uh, just a shade worried at the start that they've given away. Not that he ever looks it. Yeah, you're right. I think in a, in a big game like this, because it's a l knockout game, how you handle that pressure, how you start, at times it makes a difference. And for Kabul, it's been a decent start so far. Coming down the track, getting a bit of movement as well. That's the end of the second over. 25 without loss. No real opportunity so far, but uh, Luke Ronke's presented a couple of half uh, opportunities. 
gets to Fakhti Fanta's interest. It Udana comes in for a second over from the pavilion end. Hazrat goes for it. Of course, uh, I have a man on the leg side boundary. So just a single, but when he gets going, it's so pleasing. That 60 hit, terrific. How quickly it flew well past the boundary line was amazing. Yeah, you're right. He's got the gift of timing. That's that's exactly what uh, he can do so well, Zazai. We saw the way with those uh, six sixes in one over, and a brilliant hundred as well in the Afghanistan Premier League. Coming from his blade, he's absolutely brilliant. The bat flow, the bat speed he possesses, such a talent. Once again, going big, high up in the air. Man coming underneath. Not an easy catch, but does really well in the end. That's the wicket they wanted. He was getting uh, quick runs there. Being high up in the air, underlies those catches never easy. But takes a good one, and Luke Ronke has to go back. McClure, the fielder, taking that one. Well, he was looking a little dangerous, he wasn't he? A couple of half chances this time. Bottom of the bat went uh, way up in the sky. Three people converging on it. Eventually, it was uh, Callum McLeod who picked it up. Not easy, mind you, over his shoulder. But very well done. So, Udana strikes. And uh, Ronke returns after a quick 15. It's 26 for one. So once again, the pitch hitter coming at number three. That's uh, Wayne Pondle batted well in the last game, getting 42 in quick fashion. We had a cameo. So once again, promoted up the order. And he's here because uh, of this. This was a wicket of Luke Ronke. Once again, going for the uh, big shot. Virish in the field, uh, pushing it early. Going high up in the air. A very good catch there. Never easy. McLeod, the fielder, does really well. Just following the batsman on that occasion, Odana. Very good move, uh, Charu, as far as Mohamed Shahzad is concerned, because his first over was expensive. Then at times you just uh, make uh, him wait, probably bring him in the middle overs after the power play. But Mohamed Shahzad, credit to him, made him bowl the second over as well with the new ball. For sure. I mean, <laughs> considering what Rodan has done in the tournament, you have to uh, believe in him. And uh, Mohamed Shahzad did. He must be wondering, though, what should I do, bring in a spinner or not? But uh, luckily it worked for him. And uh, I do have to say that even here, I think uh, there's Wayne Parnell's batting record. Striking pretty good. Uh, Rashid Khan obviously has been influenced a bit by Colin Ingram, who was uh, captaining their previous match and had promoted Wayne Parnell to three. So maybe they've had a chat and uh, Rashid also agrees that, yep, Parnell did the job the last time around. Can he do it again? Uh, that's a good thing here for uh, the Pakti Panthers is now both the left-handers out there, Wayne Parnell and Hazrat Razazai. So as a bowler, you can settle into a line because with the left and right combination, always uh, difficult. You've got to, to arrange the field as well accordingly. So now he's just going to uh, settle much better. Afridi will have a big role to play with the ball. He's bowled well so far in the Afghanistan Premier League. Yeah, I'm tempted to say a little up and down, though. He's given plenty of runs on occasion, but of course, very useful as an all-rounder. Much better. Easy there. Hazrat desperately wanted the strike. Could have almost gotten run out had he not put that uh, bat down quickly. And uh, I keep saying that when the ball hits the pads, it squirts somewhere around the wicket. Uh, the striker is not that keen to take a single. You've got to be careful. Yeah, but good thinking as well from Odana because he was uh, shying at the right end. Just having the crease there, just coming back in time. Although it won't have made a difference, but he's got to be careful. He's a good uh, fielder against his own bowling. Odana. Well, uh, Hazratullah will be warned because Udana, of course, very clever. And Hazrat was just dawdling out there till uh, he realized, oh, shucks, the throw is coming in my direction. Quickly had to return. Oh, clever. What a useful slower delivery. Of course, Luke Ronke had read it well in uh, the last over, but it worked for Udana this time. Yeah, bowled really well, Udana. He's been uh, very impressive. Picked up two wickets uh, against the same team. Last game as well, just see uh, opening the power play as well. Coming from the T-shirt, but they're absolutely brilliant. Right in the block hole. 
the big wicket as well off us as I didn't have any clue about that one just uh, just letting off the pads there they started off pretty well with the new ball that's exactly what he's done time and again in this uh, tournament so far yeah without question taking wickets at the top terrific of course he comes back and does very well at their service as well whips away and a little bit of ground to cover there will they take the two no <laughs> Hasratullah is very keen to take the strike, although, mind you, there is the over. So, Wayne Parnell will retain it. 29 for one after three. one wicket 29 for one uh, Kabul win the toss batting first after three overs it's going to be a, a change in bowling as well Amar Zai now coming into the attack the end where Sharifi uh, bowled up the only over coming from the Sharjah club end one wicket for him uh, in his T20 career so not much experience so it's going to be a big outing for him and check that economy rate near 10 so this is a bit of a gamble and Mohammad Shahzad if it works he'll be delighted if not I suppose uh, the team has to be blamed. There we go. The field for Parnell. Oh, inside edge. Can't control that, Mama Chazad. <laughs> well, he looks a little distraught, but uh, can't uh, do much about that, can you? Yeah, that was a streaky shot. Not very convincing there from Parnell. But whatever, I think he'll take that because he gets a boundary early on. Exactly what he's been sent for. Not very intended to play up. That's a fork four, fork boundary. Inside edge could have gone anywhere. Filing inside the circle. He's got to change the pace as well. I wonder what that uh, first ball fog boundary is going to do to the confidence of uh, Omar Zai. Still very young. Uh, digs it in. And oh, has that been taken? That will be the most incredible catch we've seen diving forward. He's claiming it. Oh, Wayne Parnell might just want to wait and see how that goes. But that went like lightning. And what a terrific catch. One of the best we've seen in the league. Yeah, you're right. It could be the catch of the match, catch of the league as well, because uh, that was really well struck. The soft signal is out, so we just uh, checking with the third empire as well. But the reaction at times, uh, that body language, makes you feel that he's taken it very cleanly. He's pretty delighted uh, straight away. That's a legal delivery, no issues with that. Absolutely fine. But just see, uh, very nicely coming the meat of the blade, dipping that. Oh. Well, I'll have to agree with that soft signal because he seems to have gotten his uh, fingers underneath the ball. And it slides nicely into the palm. What a catch. Diving to the right or left or leaping high is one thing, but diving in front of you to a dipping ball hit at great pace. I think this is an absolutely magnificent catch. I wonder what the third umpire thinks, but Ajay, I'm pretty happy with that. And we'll have to count it as one of the very best. Yeah, you're right, because you can see uh, the ball just going into the hands there, into the cup. He's done really well. Had it hit the ground, would have been uh, one bounce. It could have really uh, been <coughs> seen straight away. But that's a very good anticipation there. Just see eyes on the ball. Looks to me right palm, left palm, fingers underneath. And uh, thank you very much. But like I said, I'm not the third umpire. I think that's pretty fair. Sometimes, of course, these television angles can make it a little difficult. But the fielder is very happy to claim it. And why not? Superb catch. Top drawer. Yeah, looks to be perfectly okay. They're still uh, looking at it. The third empire. As I mentioned, uh, the soft signal was out. See, once again, coming into the cup there. The fingers uh, really underneath the ball there, so no issues. It's just the first point of impact that it seems to hit the right palm. And thereafter, of course, the left comes in. And therefore, I don't think the ball had a chance to hit the ground at all. But uh, like I said, these can be tricky. Okay, red or green? I think it should be red. So that's out. And that's the right decision as well. This is exactly what you're mentioning. So Farnell has to uh, go back. Will be disappointed. Five of five is 33 for two now.
So suddenly, they lost two wickets uh, in quick succession. Colin Ingram, he walks in. Played really well uh, in the last game, just coming back into form. And he's here because uh, of this. Uh, Bit of a tag there, and it's gone really well, coming to the meat of the blade. But that's a beauty. That's a gem uh, of a catch. Absolutely brilliant anticipation. The ball was dipping. Even uh, the bowler was surprised, Charu. I was about to say, look at Omar Zayed's reaction. It's like, wow, if he would lip read. And it truly was a terrific catch. So here we go. Omar Zayed, wicket in his first over. And down leg, an appeal. What's Anil Chaudhary going to say? I think the bat came a little late, maybe off the thigh pad. But uh, tense moments for Kabul Zwanan. Yes, I think that was uh, pretty clear. The sound, uh, the ball just... Uh, Deflating from the pad there, bit of deviation, just clipping the pad on its way to the wicket keeper, Mohamed Shahzad. He's uh, a bit excited, appealing for that one, but a big experience in final, Chaudhary. Well, you couldn't possibly, Mohamed Shahzad, have seen where that hit, but uh, maybe just going on noise once again, as keepers certainly do. Another ball again, going for that inside edge boundary of the very first ball. I was wondering what Omar Zai will do. But the youngsters responded brilliantly, of course. It was a terrific catch. But uh, since then, he's kept it pretty tight. Hasn't gotten carried away. And uh, Hal McLeod. Now that's it. First of fire. Three fielders converged. I'm sure the calling was spot on. And uh, took it over his shoulder, which is never easy. And uh, to follow up with that skyer, same. On the boundary, ran in, dived forward. Oh, just brilliant. They already shown what a good fielder he is. That one once again. Uh, what a variation in pace. Very close to being a wide. But lucky there for the bowler. He's done a tremendous job so far on the field. Two very good uh, catches. Just a start you want as a side. Especially for Omar Zai, a young man. Playing a big uh, game this one. The semi-final. Just a start he wanted. He was a bit surprised as well. But next up was uh, Colin Ingram. Really batted well. Uh, Charu, the last game. Getting 83 under his belt. Played really well. Yeah, it was a captain's knock for sure. But uh, just about McLeod, McLeod once again. Uh, whatever runs he scores hereafter will all be a bonus because I think he's already about 40, 50 up. With those two catches. 83 not out and just 51. Of course, he's leading the side as well. So a little bit of pressure. But how badly did he start? 9 1, 4 4. But they persisted with him. That's the big thing. They have confidence in his abilities. Will be up off the strike as well with that single. The four gone is 34 for two. of Afghanistan out in the park. Welcome once again to the Sharjah Cricket Ground. You're watching the second semi-final. Thanks for joining us of the uh, Gul Bahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by Fog. Now, the fact that Kabul Zwanan have not gotten away to a terrific start and have lost two wickets, I think once again, all the ingredients of a thriller, I think. It's a change of end for Sharifi. I mean, uh, that's a good start as well. Coming on from the other end, bowl one over was expensive early on. Omar Zai coming from the end where he bowled uh, that one over. Really, uh, they're banking on uh, the young bowlers here, Sharifi, Omar Zai, Madhana getting an early wicket as well. I don't have any reason to say this, but uh, or not much, but I think Colin Ingram's looking just a uh, shake, a little shaky is what I wanted to say. And uh, I wonder if he just wants to take a single if he can and get Hazrat on strike. Oh, whipped away. Well done. Not a clever delivery from Zia. Down leg. Most batsmen uh, will find it very easy to get some runs. This time of fog, Taluriza. Yeah, those are easy pickings. For a man who really batted well in the last game, knows uh, the surface, down the pad line, just had to whip it away. But exactly what he did, poor line there. Fine leg field inside the circle. All he needed to do was some get some bat to it. That's exactly what he did. Was in the air, but just leading the fielder. You just have to be very unlucky to have a shot like that carry straight to short fine. Because uh, it normally travels at speed on faster bowlers, and it's just very difficult for the short fine fielder. Oh, Zia, what was that? Of course, trying to compensate, trying to ensure that he doesn't drift down leg again. And 
Uh, oof. It looks a decent surface, although uh, you can see a few uh, cracks which are visible, but the uh, binding is so very good. You can see that uh, sheen as well, Alistair did mention in his pitch report. But uh, yes, because uh, that's, I think, uh, natural wear and tear because a lot of games have been played. You can see those cracks, but still, uh, if you apply yourself, this wicket is full of runs. Exactly what we saw yesterday, the way Bulk batted. Yeah, no uneven bounce so far. That's the one thing that most batsmen just get a little put off by when you can't trust the bounce and you don't quite know whether to play your shots or not. But so far, so good. We'll see whether it takes a bit of spin when spin does, does come on. For the moment, Mohammad Shahzad has avoided bringing spin uh, during power plays, but uh, we'll see what happens next over. So just a shot of uh, Wayne Parnell there, unfortunately not working out as a ploy to send him number three this time around. But I'm sure he'll want to contribute with the ball where he began shakily, but eventually has been among the wickets, I think nine or so, so far. Well, wouldn't be a big surprise for me if uh, Shahid Afridi uh, rolls his arm pretty early. Because he can bowl that googly uh, very effectively against uh, the left-handers. Change of pace there. One for the over. That's the indication from the umpire. Well, that was not a quick one. And a wonderful carry. Hazrat Zazai for a change bailing out of that one because uh, he, was, he saw it early enough, got into position. And then, yeah. I mean, you could call it a slower bouncer, but <laughs> I think he read it quickly enough, checked his shot. Still carried very well for a slow bouncer. Oh, that's pulled away. There was a man at deep mid-wicket, but she's eluding the fielder at mid-on. Was in the air. Read that slow delivery once again very early on that occasion. Azizullah Zazai is so good uh, with that pull shot. Again, a slow one, and he had to adjust a bit. Didn't quite catch the sweetest part of the bat, but shy the freely to know that there was no sense chasing it he just stood there at uh, mid on and said well well played fog saluriza i think the angle he's bowling with with the coming around the wicket he's got a man at deep mid wicket deep square leg as well that's the reason he's trying those slow bouncers because uh, if you're bowling over the wicket the angle will be different for the left hander but coming around the wicket it's not as easy to play in that direction and waiting for another big one ah oh. Nice and quick. No ball. Well, that'll be very disappointing from Zia's angle. He had the measure of Hazrat Zazai. And uh, now license for Hazrat to show us his big hitting skills. They're just getting the carry. You know, extra carry there. Just see uh, over uh, the helmet as well. Already bowled that uh, one bouncer in the over. So that's going to be a free hit. Going to be uh, Zazai on strike now. Does he uh, capitalize on that? Does he uh, take tour of Freezy just having a word with a young man? <laughs> exactly what he's got to do. Well, it's much easier said than done, but it'll, ha it'll have to be full. A Yorker, please, Zia. And or Hazrat might just cart you over the boundary. Can't she in the field? And he goes for the big one. That's uh, high up in the air. Fielder out there. Doesn't make a difference. But he's settled for a couple of runs. All <coughs> happened in that delivery. That's the end of the fifth over as well. 47 for two. Zia, once again, uh, shared expense of the last over 13 runs off it. That no ball was quite unfortunate. And you ought to know that you can't bowl two over the shoulder. But uh, he did, and uh, luckily for him, didn't get punished. That's a good effort. Doing uh, a good job out there. But uh, last ball, uh, previous over, it was a free hit, going for the big one. Wanted, plays that shot really well, high up in the air. And the field uh, just making a hash of that one. <laughs> Should have been taken. But in the end, really doesn't matter. Because it was a free hit. 
I wonder if Shinwari had half an eye on uh, what the batsmen were doing because of a no ball, he must have known that you can run them out. So it's like, let me quickly catch it and throw it back. Ball beats the gap. So stepping away. Hazrat Zazai once again didn't catch that too well, but there will be another fog boundary. And he is off and away. And the 50 up as well with that strike. That's a very good uh, fog for once again. What I really loved was the transfer away, the way he just waits for that one. On the back foot, never easy. But that's a talent that he possesses. Beautiful weight transfer. What a bad speed as well from Zazai. So good, so amazing. Reminds me of Brian Lara. You know, though he used to bat in that such fashion. Past the bowler, plenty of bat on it. Oh, Donna, well done. Big dive to his right. Has saved two runs for sure. But I tell you what, if he occupies the crease for some time, Charu. Runs are going to come thick and fast because already the run rate is hovering around 10. And I don't think he's going to get tricked by most of the spinners either. So again, the inside uh, half of the bat and low on it as well. Still got plenty of power and only Udana's dive could save that uh, potential fog boundary. Well done, Isur Udana. Tough enough to come and bowl all these overs and then all that diving around. But Sri Lankans really has put his heart into this tournament. One of the big reasons, again, that the Gulbahar Afghanistan Premier League powered by fog has been so successful. Straight to the fielder. He's so good against pace, and that's the reason I was wondering. Probably uh, the spinners could have been brought early, especially Shai the Fidi against him. The googly bowls, Virishin, he's got the experience he's got. He's just warming up at the moment. So it could be next after the power play. Yeah, power plays can be really rough on spinners, although Mohammad Nabi has largely bowled very well for his team. Balak Legends, he begins. So traditionally, at least two overs, if not more, during power play for him. Lucky, obviously a slower delivery, which uh, Hazrat read very late. Still tried to go through with that. Lucky he didn't play on. Yeah, you mentioned about the spinner as well. Uh, yesterday we saw Mujib uh, being very expensive, bowling in the power play. Never easy. Although the control he's got. Up at that four, of course, coming back pretty well here. So again, we'll have to say, Omazai, not bad. Gave only five of his first over. Seven so far, considering that Hazrat Zazai has been at the strike more often than not. So far, a very useful over. Last ball now. Uh, and uh, that might just be a single. Hazrat very happy to keep strike. So another useful over by the youngster. And after six, it's 55 for two. So going to be a change in bowling after the power play, after the first six over, it's going to be Tyre Adil now coming in. The right arm uh, of break bowler, not a bad ploy against uh, the left-handers out there. Three wickets for him so far in the APL, uh, two for 20 is best. Has been expensive. Playing his uh, fourth game, Tyre. Goes for a big one and straight to the fielder. Does really well. That's a big wicket. That's the wicket they wanted. What a start here for Tahil. That was absolutely spot on. They have been very sharp on the field. The Panthers so far. Well, Ashraf, if uh, McLeod hadn't done well enough, this is another superb catch. Of course, it was coming straight to him. Just had to judge it well. Might have uh, wanted to take another step forward, but it was traveling so quickly. Difficult to move and, and really get gauge that, but uh, Hazrat Zazai will be so disappointed. Caught it well, just a little low on the bat, plenty of power behind that. And then, of course, he kept watching it till it went safely into the hands. A little low, mind you. The umpires may want to take another look at it, but uh, so far, so good. So Hazrat has not been able to play a big innings today. There it is again. Let's check. And, oh, yeah, well, there's plenty behind. That's okay. Yeah, no issues there as far as no ball is concerned. Going for the big one, just ahead of the elevation, uh, Zazai. But what a catch. Uh, the fielding has been splendid. Low down, never easy. 
Not a great angle to confirm whether that's a fair catch, but of course, Sharaf, what an effort. Little dipping very quickly, low to his left, and that should show us. Uh, oh, that's just brilliant. Well above the ground, and uh, they'll have to compete with that uh, McLeod catch earlier on. Yeah, into the hand, uh, safe as a house there, no issues. He's pretty delighted. Those are the importance of that wicket. Absolutely brilliant. That's the right uh, decision as well. No issues there. So uh, the third wicket gone, 55 for three at this stage. It's Bahir, wicket off the very first delivery. And Mohamed Shahzad couldn't be more pleased. The power play is up as well, so more fielders at the boundary line, more protection for spinners particularly. Javed Ahmadi comes in. And, uh, it's a tough situation now for Kabul. Yeah, good move uh, by Mohamed Shahzad, bringing in the off spinner against the left-handers uh, very early. First of all, you get a wicket. You're really high on confidence, exactly uh, what you're looking for. Really uh, marshaled his troops very nicely, Mohamed Shahzad. What pressure now. They have really built with those uh, three wickets. Yeah, but I suppose one of the many keys now is Colin Ingram to get a ho whole lot of runs. He's been there just for a while. He's had a bit of a sighter. But as a lefty, he'll have to be a little careful against uh, the right arm off spinner who goes round again, the wicket. So on the offside, uh, there's a cover sweeper and, of course, a long off. And three on the leg side, patrolling the boundary. The problem here for the Kabul side, uh, Charu, has been they have those small partnerships of the order. 26 for the first wicket. Then they lost the second wicket at 33, then 55 for three. Elevation at all as he wanted, but what a catch! That's played well. That's played in the gap as well. Going to be a fork four. Good footwork as well. Uh, uses the depth of the crease, rocking back. Does well there. Colin Ingram. Uh, just a shade short. I don't think it was that short to cut. Let's take a look at it again. That uh, fourth breach as well. That was the key. And uh, Colin Ingram had plenty of time to plan that. Hit it between back foot point and the man at cover point boundary. Great shot. Pick up a single, uh, easy single to end the over. Will retain strike as well. Successful over. Seven gone. It's 61 for three. Sixty-one for three after seven. The run rate is uh, pretty healthy, just under nine to the over, but they lost three wickets. That's the key here for the Kabul's one on. They've got to make sure they don't uh, lose a couple more here going into the back end. They need somebody there that's set. We know that uh, they've got a few guys that can play cameos. Rashid Khan in particular. Shahid Afridi into the attack, into his seventh game of the tournament. Economy rate of just under. Eight to the over, so he's had a few games where he's been good, other games where he's been a little expensive. Colin Ingram, the key here, they've got to uh, make sure that uh, he hangs in there. It's going to take a bit of time to get going, but if they're going to get that uh, 170, 180, you just get the feeling that uh, he's got to uh, get 40 or 50 of them, I reckon. Javad Amadi as well is a really good player, really good batsman. 15 runs uh, in the last uh, 13 balls. So it hasn't been as fluent as uh, they have been up front. They lost the one wicket as well. Claudio, if you haven't been to uh, myteam11.com, you better get there now because uh, that's where you can create your own fantasy team and test your skills. And by the way, you can win real cash prizes as well. So uh, log on and get selecting. Make sure that uh, before that final, you've got uh, the best team available. That's cut away. It's in the gap. But uh, Shida Freedy normally has that sweeper very square. So even though uh, you beat that man, you think maybe there's two. It's not often there. Hamid Desan alongside. What do you make of uh, things thus far in this uh, all-important semi-final? It's a huge, big game for both sides. 
and the pressure will be there. Maybe they don't have a clue, batting or bowling. They already got three wickets, but they are, but they're still looking for some more wickets. Shahid Afridi, he can get some wickets for the team. It will be helpful to restrict the Kabul zone on. More than 150 runs or 180 or 160 because surface is very good. It's good to bat. And uh, we know Shehzad is in such a brilliant form. If he clicks, there will be some damage for uh, Kabul's one on. Yeah, you need a few boundaries, though. He who hits the most sixes, I reckon, has uh, got the best chance of winning this game. And that uh, has been through the tournament thus far as well. And that's uh, clubbed down the ground. And uh, will beat both the converging fielders. Excellent way to end the over for Kabul. Eight overs done, 69 for three. Just slightly full from Shai Dafridi, last ball of the previous over. And, uh, well, Ingram's not going to miss out there. Smashes it down the ground and middle off Madon. Well, not even in the picture there. That's how hard it was hit. They needed something like that just to rescue the over. It was a good one thus far by Shai Dafridi. Sharafuddin into the attack. This will be interesting to see how he bowls. The ball's a little bit older. Let's have a look if he gets a bit of purchase. If the ball just stops in the surface a wee bit. Yeah, Sharaf is in the attack. A very good bowler for Afghanistan and also for Patia. He's here. The way he bowl, he's very experienced. And he know how to handle the situation. He came, remember one game, he bowled really well. In the second last over, he turned the game for the team. And right now he's bowling to Colin Ingram. The man in form from last two games. And they will need this wicket. Very important for the Patia. So plenty of thinking will be around in Shazad's mind. How to get a wicket of Ingram. Oh, that's a slightly cut. Just no runs. Yeah, just trying to give himself room and work it away through that offside, Colin Ingram. Not able to find a gap on that occasion. So again, they're under pressure, the batting side. Just the one off the over. 